ChrisWahabiKing.com. So we're going to do a quick build video on our Quantum uh, DIY FPV uh, goggles. So we want you guys to see how quick and easy it is to uh, assemble these, as well as some of the custom options that you can do with them uh, to get the most out of these set of goggles. Let's go ahead and uh, go over what comes in the box when you go ahead and crack this open. So it comes in a box like this, and first thing you're going to notice is a very well written instruction manual. Uh, you'll be able to follow these and get it assembled in no time. Uh, assembly on this probably only takes about 15 minutes. We're going to go ahead and edit it and make it a, a little shorter. But anyway, take a look at this. I'm going to throw in uh, a few tips uh, on assembly that aren't necessarily in the manual, so definitely stay tuned. First thing uh, we're going to talk about are the two housings uh, for the FPV monitor itself. They just go together, you know, top and bottom, clamshell, pretty straightforward right there. But on the design, we went ahead and uh, tried to make this as ergonomically friendly as we possibly could for most users but since it is just foam you're able to just take your uh, sharp razor blade exacto knife and go ahead and cut this down and trim it to fit your face so what I'd recommend you doing before you do anything is go ahead and put the clamshells together just hold them and fit it up to your your face and and uh, and try and get this to conform as best you can now in the kit does come with some uh, foam strips that block out the light that'll take up some of the slack so it doesn't absolutely have to be perfect this is definitely something that you can do after the fact as well uh, but in a way that I just wanted to point out that it is foam and it was designed to be able to be DIY and, and trim it and fit it uh, to your face best you can as well a couple other things that I want to point out on this housing itself is it does have the slots we'll go over those in a second for the straps as well well as a nice curved surface right on top that was originally designed for uh, ball cap brim so you can uh, attach that to a ball cap brim and use that for the uh, the top strap as well as getting some of that sunlight blocked off uh, from the monitor itself so let's go ahead and dive into the assembly um, first thing per the instructions is to uh, insert the light blockers and support for the focusing ring on that so it's these uh, foam little squares that come in the kit and essentially they just go in on each side of the FPV uh, goggle uh, housing. Now, first thing we're gonna talk about gluing on this. There's a couple options that you can uh, do on this uh, depending on what you have available to you. We want to be everyone to be able to assemble these. Um, of course, uh, foam cure uh, type of glue is uh, recommended. Hot glue gun works uh, extremely well. I would not recommend CA with this. In, if you do use CA, I would definitely use a thick CA. Um, you do not want to get that CAA anywhere around these lenses, it could cause it to fog. Um, so definitely don't use uh, CAA if you don't have that option. Like I said, hot glue gun would be the best option in this assembly just to make it quick and easy. I'm going to use double sided tape which actually works extremely well for this. Uh, so we can just roll through this really quickly. So like I said, first thing is to go ahead and get these installed. All right, and there's the last one taped on in. Like I said, if you have a hot glue gun available to you, just go ahead and run a small bead. Try not to get it on the top because it is important that you get this nice squish and light tight seal around the top on that. So just make sure you run a bead along the bottom or just do what like I did and use some really good uh, two-sided tape. So we've got those two house halves uh, assembled and those are gonna be going together like that and creates that seal for the focusing uh, ring uh, for the uh, lens. So let's go ahead and jump. Uh, following the instructions, it's actually the, uh, the focusing ring that we have to assemble next. We wanna make sure that this is nice and dry and uh, glued up before we mess with the, uh, the lenses itself. We don't want any glue on these uh, optical lenses. So it comes with these two little tabs and the focusing ring, pretty self-explanatory. The two sides go plug right into each other and that's pretty much all you have on that one. Go ahead and hit a little hot glue gun around the edges on this one to, uh, to get those held in and uh, then we're going to install the, uh, the ring itself so give me one second. All right while well, that's drying up let's go ahead and talk about the lenses. When you open up the kit you're actually going to get three lenses with this kit. Now uh, there's actually two uh, different magnifications. Um, what we did when we initially first started uh, designing and building this that uh, we found the initial lens that we liked uh, and we found another vendor we tried a different uh, um, focusing range but we determined that those lenses were substantially better than the originals um, uh, optically and you can tell when you open it up there's two that are ultra clear and then the one that's kind of like so so take that one toss it aside it's rubbish don't worry about it the other two uh, one is a 3x zoom and the other is 4x zoom now 
We don't really have a clear winner between the two. Uh, each person has their pros and cons to which lens they like better. One gives you a more stretched, uh, a wider view, so you don't get it that boxed in view. Uh, but with that, you get a little curvature towards the ends, uh, which you can focus out if you want. And the other lens works a little bit better for the 4.3 aspect ratio on the monitor. It all depends on your preference. I'd recommend trying both. Uh, as far as putting it into the, the housing, we're just gonna use scotch tape. So you can try both and figure out which one works best for you. So on the lenses, uh, this should be dried. Let's go ahead and jump over to that. All right, so the hot glue gun on the uh, lens frame should be all set and dry. Like I said, CA, uh, if you know what you're doing with the lenses, you can go ahead and use that. The problem is, is it's gotta be totally cured because the, uh, the vapors from the CA will uh, fog these lenses up. Now what this frame does is if we grab one of the housings right here, it sits right in between these two and it slides back and forth to change that focusing distance. Uh, and it has a couple different effects. Uh, you can also tweak it side to side as well. Uh, if you have one more eye that's dominant than the other one, it works really well and slide it back and forth. You've got quite a range right in here, so you can dial it in right where you need it to be. Now on the lens itself, go ahead and uh, grab the, uh, the lens you want to try. Like I said, you're going to want to take that one, rubbish, throw it away. The other two, it's easy to determine the focusing uh, range on it. You can hold the two up uh, above uh, like text in this matter, and you can see what the focusing distance is between the two. You can mark them if you want, or just know lens A, lens B, it doesn't really matter. You go ahead and just lay that in the box, and uh, the CNC on the FR4 matches the uh, stamped area for the, the lens itself right in here. Now you've got a nice uh, brim right around the outside, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is just use some scotch tape, and we're gonna go ahead and just tape that into place. All right, now we're back. I got two uh, strips of tape all the way uh, on this. Now, when you decide what lens you like best, you can go ahead and do a more secure install, but to be honest with you, tape is more than adequate. And you're gonna wanna run it uh, all the way around on this to stop the lens from distorting. That's why I went with an FR4 uh, frame so you don't get any curvature in there. So you've essentially got the lens assembly ready, and that goes right into the, the two housings uh, just like that. All right, now that we've got the, uh, the lens all set, let's go ahead and turn our attention to the monitor itself. Now, we touched on some of the, uh, the features of this monitor in the other video, uh, the main thing being that it's a non-blue screen. It is four uh, by three, and it has two aspect ratios available, 4.3 and 16 by nine. Uh, those are selectable via the quick, uh, easy uh, selection buttons on the back. Now, when you take a look at this monitor, um, the bottom is the cord. The, the cord coming out of this, uh, whatever side that is towards, uh, is the bottom of the monitor itself. So you just grab your lower housing, uh, which obviously has the nose cut out in it, and you're gonna just slip the monitor in the molded slot. Pretty much as simple as that, and you're ready to go there. Uh, the top housing is just gonna go on the top of that. So let's go ahead and grab that. We have our foam on that, and you need to make sure the lens is centered in between the two of those, and you're just gonna take the, the top, slide it down, make sure everything fits nice and tight. Take a look around it, um, and so far we're halfway there. Everything looks pretty good. So since everything looks good, what we wanna do is go ahead and glue the upper and the lower halves together. We wanna make sure we do not get any glue into this foam area. It's just these points right here and right here. Uh, like I said, for the, uh, the sake of uh, timing on this one, what we're gonna go ahead and do is just go ahead and tape this down. But if you wanna use hot glue gun, go ahead and use hot glue gun. In my opinion, it's a little bit better if you have that available. So give me a second, we'll go ahead and get this uh, two house glue together and be right back. All right, guys, the, uh, the glue's uh, nice and dry on that. Nice sturdy box, we're ready to rock and roll with that. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one, which will be our strap system on this. Now, if we take a uh, look, we've got uh, three uh, divots that are designed for the alignment on the strap itself. We've got one on the left, the right, and uh, one on the top as well. Uh, we don't have an included uh, strap for the top because, it, like I said, it is a DIY and we're not sure exactly how you're gonna uh, utilize this. You might uh, sew up a strap that has a battery implemented in it or whatever you want. But the other reason is, is that nice curved surface, uh, like I was telling you before, was designed for a ball cap, so you can go ahead and uh, glue a ball cap to the top of that as necessary. So on these sides, we've got these divots for those slots. Let's go ahead and grab a uh, sharp uh, X-Acto knife or a razor blade, and we're just gonna make a slot so that we can uh, slip these on through. Give me one second. All 
All right, now that we got the two slots cut, uh, we just need to insert our straps. Now, the easy way to do it is if you got yourself a ruler, you just take the strap, bend it over the ruler, and we're gonna shove it through that slot that we got. If not, just grab yourself a, a sharp object like a flat blade screwdriver, and you can work it on through there. And uh, once it's through that, through that slot, what we're gonna do is just kind of roll it over itself twice, and we're gonna use the two included screws to uh, screw through the strap and into the foam on the inside. So let me go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, so I've got my two straps inserted through those slots that I just cut. Now, before you uh, move on at this point, you guys uh, want to go ahead and take a look at the length of the straps, kind of put, you, put them around your head and determine uh, the, the stretch point that you want as well as the adjustment point, how much adjustment you want. You may want to trim these down a little bit uh, uh, depending on you know, the size of your head and, uh, and the length of these straps. So uh, we did leave quite a bit extra in here. Uh, on these ones, I've already pre-cut them, so I'm gonna go ahead and just roll them over and screw them onto the inside. So go ahead and give me one second. All right, so what I did was went ahead and take the, uh, the straps, I rolled them over uh, on top of itself twice. I went ahead and just ran the screws through it. Now I'm just gonna line it up on the foam, pull this through tight, and screw it right into the foam so they don't pull out. Uh, pretty much simple as that. All right, as simple as that. Go ahead and pull this uh, strap in, and you can see that we've got it nice clean on the inside right in there. You can also go ahead and glue those on the inside if you want with a little hot glue gun, but I wouldn't recommend it. The screws are more than ample because of the, the loop over and through the foam. It's not gonna pull through it. Plus, this allows you to be able to remove the strap if you want to later do a DIY, sew on a battery clip or something like that at a later point. So that's all you really need to do at that point. And then you're just gonna bring this around and you'll be able to adjust it to uh, uh, fit your uh, head and uh, tension as necessary. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the last and final step. Now, I mentioned in the beginning that you want to go ahead and conform this to your face, depending on how uh, your face is, uh, flat or broad or wide, so that you minimize the amount of light coming in. Uh, once you've done that, or it, this one is good enough, uh, just the way it is, uh, use the included foam strips and you're just gonna go ahead and lay these down for a nice uh, seal between your face and a lot better padding than the, than the foam. And we're gonna go ahead and run that around the outside and that's gonna complete uh, the FPV goggles. Now we're gonna uh, come back and, and talk about some of the adjustments that you can make on this as well as some uh, custom options as well. So let me go ahead and get this foam laid up and I'll go ahead and power these on and we'll talk about those. Give me one second. And there you go, guys. Uh, it's that simple. These are ready to use. Now let's go ahead and talk about some of the custom features that you can go ahead and do to this. Obviously, we talked about the uh, the curvature with using a brim of a hat and uh, using a hat for your top strap. Uh, you can modify these straps and put uh, little clips in there and, uh, and for batteries. Um, we've got a little shelf right in here that we've left available so you can put uh, a head tracker unit if you want. It'll go right onto the top of that. As well as it being foam, you're able to carve and hack and and change this around uh, so that you guys can use uh, uh, video transmitters uh, integrated in this or, or run the cables uh, if you want to go ahead and clip these and, and if you're comfortable with soldering, you can solder up some nice clean cables uh, so you don't have to run this loom up over your, your shoulder. Um, and the other thing that I want to talk about is the lenses itself. Uh, I remember I told you that you have a couple of available lenses right in here. You take this and, and sweep it to its extents on both sides and push it to one side. You're able to pop it out. You'll be able to change to a different lens and find out which one works best for you on these uh, and uh, give both of those a try. Uh, so let's go ahead and power these up and see how they look. Give it one sec. All right, let me go ahead and clear some of this out of the way. And in this kit, it does come with a power cable that comes with a mini JST. Uh, this monitor will accept uh, two cells, uh, three cells uh, on input. 
Uh, so we're going to go ahead and apply that on the input there. It has audio and video. Uh, most people just use it for video and set of headphones or the audio itself, so you'd probably port those out for that. Uh, so we're mainly only going to be concerned with power and video in. For video in, I'm just going to use uh, one of our standard uh, uh, cams that we have, and I've just got that being powered via 12 volts. I'm going to go ahead and apply voltage to the monitor itself. Now, you'll notice that we have static on the screen. Uh, like I was telling you before, this is a non-blue screen, so as your video signal gets weak, it starts just fading to some static, so you definitely have an uh, indicator that you're, you've got a video signal issue. You can turn and start coming back. It's not going to just blink to a blue screen on you. So let's go ahead and apply the video signal and see how she looks. And yeah, let's point out something interesting, and there we go. We have the, uh, the video signal coming in and uh, the monitor is working. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and aim that at the wall. I'm gonna go ahead and move this, the focusing on both sides. And like I was telling you before, you can adjust the side to side, uh, depending on dominant eye, you can move it forward and back. And, uh, and this allows you to, to, to control the curvature of the screen as well as the, the focal length as well as boxing or letter boxing around the outside of it. Definitely play with it. There's lots of mods that you can do with this. It's extremely easy to put together and I'm actually using them as my primary FPB because I, I much more enjoy the, uh, the look and feel of the larger monitor versus that letter box look. For the price, definitely give it a shot guys. Really easy to put together. As always, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will see you next time.